So today I want to tell you about puberty blockers. So, ah. yes, you might have heard about this in the news. So I'll just, I'll run you through if you're not sure uh, what puberty blockers are first. Uh, well, they're literally a drug that stops puberty from proceeding. It's all in the name. It's all in the name. It does what it says on the tin. Uh, they don't come in a tin. Imagine if they do. I don't actually know if they do or don't come in a tin because <laughs> I've never had them. Uh, wow. <laughs> one would you assume are, they don't come in a tin. You have lost your credibility, Cory. <laughs> Open Someone's going to find some testosterone um, <laughs> in a tin and you're going to be cancelled. <laughs> so there's something called um, uh, gonadotrophin-releasing hormone uh, agonists, uh, which basically they just uh, stop the release of uh, follicle-stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone from the pituitary gland. Uh, mm -hmm. So what that essentially means is they stop the hormones that will make your body start, uh, you know, get into puberty. Mm -hmm. These two hormones um, makes, make your um, sort of gonads start producing the sex hormones, testosterones and estrogens. Yeah. Um, and uh, puberty blockers literally stop that in its tracks. Um, so you don't develop secondary sex characteristics like beards, breasts, uh, I want to say balls. Uh, no, uh, beards, breasts, and uh, pubic hair. The three Bs. <laughs> and while you're uh, while you're on these uh, puberty blockers, you are monitored. Uh, you get regular psychotherapy, um, and they are they are essentially just a way to allow um, young people to mm. stop puberty from happening for a while, so that they can uh, get an idea of whether they want to, you know, go on to using uh, cross sex hormones uh, to treat gender dysphoria. Yeah. So. Puberty blockers, uh, they delay puberty so that you've got more time. But there's been a bit of an issue in the UK recently. Uh, two women in particular have now made the lives of a lot of transgender kids a lot harder um, by going to the high court. And there's been a high court ruling that has essentially just very, very much limited the um, access that transgender children have to uh, these uh, puberty blockers. And bear in mind, I say access that transgender kids have to these puberty blockers. You don't necessarily need to be trans to have these mm. to have these puberty blockers, but if you think you are, it it makes sense to go on them because yeah. if you are if you are a trans kid, it means that um, if you go on the puberty blockers, you won't develop the secondary sex characteristics. You won't necessarily need to if you get them at the if you get them early enough, you won't need to have uh, some of the surgeries that are associated with a transition, True. like top surgery. You would yeah. need to have a mastectomy to remove breasts if you don't grow them in the first place. Yeah, things like that. Um, um, facial feminization surgery, things like that. You won't need to go through these costly and uh, off very like sometimes very long procedures. Mm. So it, puberty blockers, they make sense. A again, I will say they are kind of in uh, a fairly experimental state. They have been around for over a decade. Mm. Um, bear in mind, I found I found some talk about them. I found a paper about them from over a decade ago. They're uh, they have been around for a while, but obviously we've not been able to do long term, lifelong studies on them mm. so far. But Generally, um, generally, I think what we found is that there are some issues with growth, which is to be expected because puberty, you know, is when you is when you grow. Yeah. So if you stop puberty, uh, people maybe uh, may grow slightly less than their uh, peers. Yeah, that, that that's kind of and bone density is another sort of um, concern. Those two are the main concerns. But puberty blockers are seen as the way to go. Uh, for this so if you've got for example a child who has gender dysphoria mm. who is going to go through a puberty that is uh kind of horrifying to them it is it it, it like i i've read papers where they said it's unethical to not prescribe them um so essentially what has been happening recently i there has been almost a sort of um there's been i would say almost a sort of climate of fear surrounding uh puberty blockers and trans kids yeah, you could say that. Yeah, some a people bit. have been vocal. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I'm what not. What would you maybe call a, f a fear? What's the scientific de term for a fear, Corey? Well, I, su what, I suppose one could <laughs> say that when it comes to trans people, there is perhaps a phobia surrounding right. them. But I wouldn't know what to call that mm, at all. Um, no, I don't so much to think of a term. It this yeah, stage. actually, guys, if in the comments you could come up with a, a name for that, that would be fantastic. It'd be really helpful for us to. <laughs> talk about this no so uh, th there has been a sort of climate and i, I and i mean th there is transphobia but there has been this climate of fear around uh, what did you just say <laughs> <laughs> there has been this climate of fear surrounding trans kids um and puberty blockers and i'm not here to say that puberty blockers are 100 fine there are no side effects hmm. um we, we're aware of what the side effects are we, it's uh, maybe slightly inhibited growth and yeah. a slight uh, effect on bone density um but again 
we like you know we have this the scientific consensus right now seems to be that um prescribing these is uh preferable to the the effects that you know going through the, the wrong puberty or going through a stressful uh, mm -hmm. stressful puberty would be so that is that is what puberty blockers are that's where we are with puberty blockers right now now I'm not gonna lie. I'm doing this story this week because I am annoyed. I am, yeah. and I am actually a little bit furious. I've been because, reading little bits about this, <laughs> right? And not just because of the high court ruling, because that's one thing which is uh, uh, an awful, awful thing to happen to uh, sort of trans youth uh, in the UK. If you want to support trans youth in the UK, uh, go and support Mermaids. Uh, they do fantastic mm, work yes. for them. Essentially, what's gone on here is the BBC uh, posted an article uh, about a study done by the Tavistock Center, which mm -hmm. is a sort of a gender identity clinic uh, for uh, trans youth. Now, this BBC article is awful. It <gasps> is infuriatingly bad in the way that it misrepresents the data of the study. The way that it, uh, the way that this article takes what is written in the study and twists it to their, uh, to what they want it to be. Um, and before I get into this, I want to say that the reason I'm talking about this is that we all need to be very discerning of what mm -hmm. we read. I often use BBC articles uh, when I'm researching. Uh, if I if I like, if I want to find if I want to find uh, sort of a broad stroke of a topic or mm -hmm. what the public thinks, or if I'm looking for an article, I can often find a if I can looking for a study or a paper, I can often find a good one via a BBC article. But we need to be discerning of the things that we read because secondary sources are often influenced by bias, and mm -hmm. in this case. This secondary source, the article that the BBC wrote about this Tavistock study, is biased. Uh, I would say, it, I literally have written in my notes, it is awful. Uh, <laughs> so this study that the Tavistock, that, that done by the Tavistock, uh, Tavistock uh, Center, is um, it's currently in the process of being peer-reviewed. Mm -hmm. It's in preprint. That basically means it has been printed. Sorry, not been printed. It's been posted. Sort of like you can find it online right now before it's been peer-reviewed. But at the top, obviously, it says... Um, it's in preprint. It right. hasn't been peer-reviewed. It means that you it's under evaluation and it shouldn't be used to guide medical practice yet. Mm -hmm. There was a disclaimer for that at the top. So, I mean, obviously, Fascinating. obviously it can be used to, uh, to guide medical practice mm -hmm. once it's been peer-reviewed, but it was only accepted for peer review, I think, the day that the High Court ruling came down. Um, there was also something. There was also something about the fact that the High Court wanted to use it as evidence, um, but the Tavistock Tav 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 were like, well, it's not been peer-reviewed yet. It's still mm -hmm. in the process of that, so... Um, and so the study, I'll tell you about the study and then I'll tell you about the article. Now this uh, study did actually it used children younger than the approved age for standard medical treatment um, using um, what they called uh, uh, hormone blockers, uh, puberty blockers at the time. Uh, it, they were using kids from I think about the age of 12 to 15. At the time, it was only 16 and up uh, kids that were allowed to use it. But nowadays right. it, it, that is lowered. Uh, they, did, they did get um, approval for that. So um, you will see in the article they maybe they talk about how they use kids that were too young. They got approval for that because you if you can't change the laws mm -hmm. before you have some data. So obviously yeah. with studies uh, with studies on things like this, you need to get sp seek specific approval to use children younger than the current legal age yeah. for it. Uh, so that's that is not really anything to worry about. If you hear people saying anything about that, they got full approval to um, they got full approval to do that. So. Um, First off, this study, it took adolescents with severe and persistent gender dysphoria. That is a key point here. Severe mm -hmm. and persistent gender dysphoria. They weren't just taking any kids that came to the clinic. They weren't just taking uh, people that had mild gender dysphoria. Yeah. Severe and persistent. Um, they gave they were giving them the puberty blockers that we that we spoke about. Um, uh, bear in mind, puberty blockers are reversible. Um, and they did this to avoid the irreversible and unwanted uh, body changes of puberty. Yeah. Now, they took in 44 12 to 15-year-olds with, as I said, persistent and severe uh, gender dysphoria. There wasn't a control group for a very, very obvious reason. It is incredibly, It would be incredibly unethical to have a control group right. of children who have per, uh, severe, severe and persistent gender dysphoria and deny them treatment for mm -hmm. that. It would be incredibly... It would, if, we were, if we were doing uh, perhaps a, a cancer study... Um, it would it would probably be fairly um, as soon as you realize sort of that oh this treatment is incredibly effective, it would be very unethical mm -hmm. to deny the treatment to people that are dying, mm -hmm. um, so that they could be a control group, uh, you know. And we've spoken about something like this on the on the show before. So in this case, 
there, and you don't always need to have a control group in studies, specifically in cases like this, where it would be incredibly unethical to subject um, kids with severe gender dysphoria to a puberty that will really? cause them from the age of twelve lifelong de- lifelong distress. Um, so that's why there's no control group. Uh, uh, and they they looked at the the bone mineral content, the bone mineral density, um, and they also looked at their sort of uh, it's something called the child behavior checklist. Uh, you self report. Basically, they looked at their bone density, uh, their bone mineral content, and also how they were doing mentally. Essentially, how their sort of life was going as well. So, forty report patients had data at twelve months follow up, twenty four at twenty four months, fourteen at thirty six months. Basically, um, the, the results of this are at the end of the study, um, one person stopped the puberty blockers, and didn't go on to have cross-sex hormones. Mm -hmm. Um, 98%, 43, went on to uh, to use, uh, went on to hormone therapy, which is, if you think about it, a fantastic thing. They were correctly diagnosed and went on to get the treatment that they were supposed to get. Mm -hmm. Because you can just come off the blockers and you just have your normal puberty, right? That's how it works. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So one per- one person ended up coming off because they didn't want to transition. They didn't transition. This just um, seems so straightforward. Like, yeah, this so, should just be. What? How? How can anyone dispute this? What are the? I don't know. Yeah, it's ridiculous. So uh, most of the participants um, so uh, said that they had positive or a mixture of positive or negative life changes while on the puberty blockers, um, and the anticipated adverse f- events were common. Now, mm-hmm. this is the thing about the the mixture of positive and negative, or um, mostly positive, um, sort of. Uh, so basically what that means is uh, the kids that were given this, they said that after they started taking um, the hormones, uh, the, sorry, the hormone blockers, the puberty blockers, they were, uh, they had po- they had a positive impact on their life or a mix of positive and negative. Now, from this, from what I've looked at in different studies, generally it seems to be when there are, um, th- when there are negative, uh, re- negative effects of transitioning, a lot of it is to do with social, um, mm-hmm. social stuff, because Transitioning can make you feel fantastic in yourself, mm-hmm. but also uh, we have this weird climate. I, what is it? I guess a phobia of trans people. I'm not sure what the word is exactly. Yeah, someone um, should make up a term for that as well. Yeah, someone yeah. should make up a term. Um, so this this way that we treat trans people often um, results in trans people not being happy with the way they're treated. Uh, and they're treated like that because they're trans. So obviously transitioning uh, would cause an increase in um, sort of dissatisfaction in that area while causing, uh, whilst, you know, also increasing your satisfaction mm. in your, your sense of self. So that is why there can often be mixed results in terms of um, in terms of like sort of positive effects on your life uh, due to being accepted or not accepted. Now, the conclusions of this uh, study were that, and I'm going to read this verbatim, overall patient experience of changes on um, the hormone blocker treatment was positive. We identified no changes in psychological function. Uh, changes in bone mineral density were consistent with the suppression of growth. Larger and longer-term perspective studies using a range of designs are needed to more fully quantify the benefits and harms of pubertal, um, pubertal suppression in gender dysphoria. Um, so th- th- the results of the study are that there wasn't any significant change, sin- uh, significant impact on psychological function. Mm-hmm. They didn't, it didn't reduce sort of psychological function. Um, the b- changes in bone mineral, de- mineral density were, um, what, were what, what one would expect. Um, and they said that more uh, study is needed. Uh, just to fully quantify the benefits and sort of uh, harms of using this uh, treatment. And that is something you see in a lot of studies, by the way, like more study is needed. Mm -hmm. That is something that we always say. But uh, broad strokes from this article, what you can take is that some kids, some kids were given puberty blockers that had gender dysphoria and they were, they were uh, 98% accurately um, diagnosed. If we go to the, the article, all but one child treated for gender dysphoria with puberty blocking drugs at a leading NHS clinic also received cross-sex hormones, a study has shown. The, the way that they're describing this is as though ah, oh, they're just gi- they're giving they're giving all of the kids that go on puberty blockers hormones. For one thing, it's not necessarily easy to go on puberty blockers in the first yeah. place. And for another thing, of course they're gonna give them hormones if that's the treatment that they need. Mm-hmm. Um, really, if you want to say this, say this correctly, is that uh, one kid that didn't need it didn't go on it. The yeah. rest that did need it did. Um, yeah, they, they they then they then go on to uh, talk about. Uh, they then bring up the thing that I mentioned earlier, where they say that uh, kids aged between twelve to fifteen and over um, were studied, and at the time only those aged sixteen and over were eligible for puberty blockers in the UK. Okay, but it's irrelevant because they received 
they received the sort of sanction to do that. When BBC Newsnight covered the study and its preliminary findings last year, it highlighted how previous research suggested all young people who took blockers went on to take cross-sex hormones, the next stage towards transitioning to the opposite gender. The Tavistock's newly published findings appear to confirm this, with 43 out of 44 participants, or 98%, choosing to start treatment with cross-sex hormones. This is doing something which is saying, uh, which is basically um, saying that, ah, yes, because they went on puberty blockers, that meant that they went on cross-sex hormones, meaning that going on puberty blockers is what makes you want to go on cross-sex hormones. When actually the reason that they went on puberty blockers and the reason they went on cross-sex hormones mm. is the same. They had severe and persistent gender dysphoria. And especially because this is not, this was, this study was not done on all kids with gender dysphoria. It wasn't even done on all kids that went to Tavistock. Mm. It was done specifically on the ones that had severe and persistent gender dysphoria, the ones that you would expect to treat with hormone therapy. So trying to say that, um, that, uh, going on hormone blockers um, is a is a sort of um, uh, will lead you to go uh, on to using uh, sort of hormone treatment later in life. It's disingenuous uh, at best. And then it goes on to say, the study had no control group with children who did not take puberty blockers uh, to enable researchers con to compare results with. Again, putting kids into this study to be a control group would be unethical because you would be denying them treatment that could, uh, like, that could, you know, save them life uh, like sort of a lifelong distress so i just want to briefly say before starting testosterone and um before starting testosterone um or before starting sort of um hormone therapy you the wait list can be up to five years for an appointment usually it could be three you need to have at least one extensive evaluation from a professional um kira bell one of the people that um has almost single-handedly stopped children's access to um hormone blockers had three um evaluations um and in these evaluations, they go through your childhood, uh, all of your mental issues, trauma. They talk extensively about gender dysphoria and ask if you've considered living in a masculine uh, female role or a feminine male role. Um, they go through the informed consent form and you, they legally have to read out all of the changes that the hormones can cause and tick, and you have to literally tick all of the boxes. Um, and uh, just another thing, detransition rates have been shown to be as low as only 0.3% in one study that I read. Mm. But in that study, less than 0.1%, uh, and that's not 0.1% of the 0.3%, less than 0.1% total was due to a change in gender identity. In fact, pain and uh, lack of acceptance um, together are much higher reasons for detransition than a uh, change in gender, uh, gender identity. That was from one study, although I have seen um, estimates of up to 3 to 5% for detransition. Um, yeah. But despite that, detransitioning is an incredibly small sort of anomaly when it comes to transition in trans people. So making these changes to support people that detransition uh, whilst harming trans people doesn't make any sense mm. because you are harming a majority to potentially help a minority. But it's even then, like puberty blockers also aim to help reduce the amount of detransitioners. They literally do, yeah. Because if do. you do happen to detransition, the you're not going to have like the more permanent effects of hormone therapy. Yeah, you just have to come off the puberty blockers and have the puberty you would have had anyway. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah absolutely. If you enjoyed that clip, head over to patreoncom forward slash guys where you can find the full show, or you can stay here and catch up on old Sci Guys episodes, or you can follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Sci Guys Pod to find out when we're doing more live shows.